you can tell I'm qualified to talk about this considering the state of my book. You read The Idiot by Elisba Tuman. You are in your sailing era. You are in your wanting to throttle Selin by her neck era. You are in your cancel Ivan era. You're in your emails were the beginning of the end of society era. You are desperately waiting for the sequel to come out this year. And in the meantime, you want to read something reminiscent of this iconic piece of literature. I have some recommendations for you. But first, in typical Batuman fashion, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk about something a bit more abstract, theoretical, and then later it will make sense to the larger point. So I have loved this book since 2017. Seeing it be recommended online for like lovers of unlikable female characters or struggling young woman fiction it made me very excited at first um but not so much anymore i have become increasingly wary of the way that books like the idiot are being used as shorthand for indicating a young woman's identity online which is why i want to talk about the aesthetics of consumption so i read tiktok cultural critic Raincore's essay standing on the shoulders of complex female characters and I think there's a few quotes that describe this pretty well. Try as I might, I can only seem to understand myself through the fictions of the more actualized and just as I reassure myself that I'm drawn to this media because of some predetermined inherent sense of self, I wonder if it's creating me too. Who would I be if I stopped consuming things? what would there be left to feel? While his essay's focus is mainly on mental illness, um, I want to highlight the dangers of flattening individual experiences through these approximations of media, especially for young women. And so this is where The Idiot comes in. So I read The Idiot when I was 18, right before starting college. I remember thinking, you know, the main character, Sainan, yeah, she's a little annoying sometimes with this crush that she has, but I didn't really critically think about it. And I just totally blindly aligned myself with the character. There's also the fact that this was the first book I read with a like Turkish American immigrant girl as the main character and like those issues of language and assimilation, but that's not entirely the point here. So now that I'm rereading the book, you know, four or five years later, I see Selin in a completely different perspective. My heart like aches for her now. And I see the purpose behind Batuman writing a very blind and oblivious young woman. But I had to go through those similar experiences by myself on my own to be able to get to the other side and see what Elif Batuman was seeing from her perspective as an adult woman writing about a fictionalized younger self. It's a good thing that I'm not exactly like Selin. There's actually a quote that I want to read from the idiot that I think kind of encapsulates what I'm trying to talk about. In the morning when I saw Ivan's name in the inbox, I almost started to cry. It reminded me of a kind of torture I had read about where afterward the captors returned your senses to you one by one and you felt so grateful that you told them everything. When I first read that part, I thought that was like kind of a normal part of being in love. And that really speaks to my lack of experience. And now when I read it, I see all that insecurity, that constant, you know, internal pain that this young woman is going through. I think it's fantastic that we have this book and, you know, we have such a perfect description of that really difficult time in your life. I just don't think that this character and what happens in this story should be romanticized. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Overall, I think there's just a very fine line between 
reading books like this or you know having them add nuance and insight to your reading experience and having it where they kind of almost make up your entire personality i think that's where the danger lies and can very easily happen um, with the way that we talk about and align ourselves with media online. It's just been on my mind a lot lately and yeah, I think people like this book for a variety of different reasons. You know, there's the fact that it's a campus novel, there's a convoluted romance, the form of the book is partially through emails, and then there's also the fact that, you know, the part one and part two are so different from each other. You know, there's all these different themes on language, a struggle to find identity, confusion and isolation at an elite university. There's a lot of things going on. I personally just loved the thoughts of between the differences of Turkish and English and how that changes kind of Sagan's meanings of the world. I thought that was so unique. So there's a lot of different things going on and that's why I've made these recommendations kind of under three categories. First, we have the struggling young woman. Second, we have the what I'm calling disoriented academia type of books. Third, we have books that explore the themes of language, meaning, and their limitations. Obviously, there's probably a lot of other books that are similar to The Idiot that I personally haven't read. The first recommendation from the category of struggling young woman is The Four Humors by Nina Sitchkin. And this is a pretty easy one, considering the fact that Elif Bhaktaman herself approves. Uh, and she calls it funny, heart-rending, illuminating, informative, brimming with cultural specificity and human universality. In this story, we follow the Turkish-American young woman in college uh, spending the summer in Istanbul. She's supposed to be studying for the MCAT, but instead she becomes obsessed with um, the ancient theory of medicine called the four humors. Yeah, it kind of chronicles her obsession into that world and her kind of struggling to grieve the, the recent loss of her father and also it ties in a lot of interesting elements of modern Turkish politics and it kind of uses the pasts and histories of the main character's family as a way of kind of weaving this larger generational story. I think this is a great recommendation if you liked the idea. It's pretty self-explanatory, I would say. Next, I would recommend Thomas Hardy's Tess of the D'Urbervilles. This is an older classic. It centers around a young, uh, impoverished English girl, Tess, and it kind of chronicles the wrongdoings that two very different men bestow upon her. It's kind of about how these two men, who one seems really great and one seems really horrible, <laughs> they both kind of end up being her downfall. If you like, you know, the struggling young woman trope, I think this will satisfy you if you haven't read it already. The next two books I would recommend under this category, I think are the least connected to The Idiot, but I have a feeling that fans would still really enjoy and they're two that I've recommended a lot online and to my friends which is Luster by Raven Lilani and Exciting Times and these two are slim novels uh, that are concerned with a struggling young woman <laughs> and um, they are both incredibly unique 
in how they present those stories. The next category is disoriented academia. I would characterize this category as for fans of The Idiot in terms of its campus novel characteristics, its concerns about academia, about knowledge, um, how young people, you know, interact with the material that they learn in school, just the whole politics of it. The first book I recommend for this, if you like those aspects of The Idiot, is definitely On Beauty by Zadie Smith. This is honestly probably one of the best books on academia that I've ever read. If you don't know what it's about, it chronicles two very different families in academia. One family is centered in a U.S academic institution. The other is in a British institution, I believe. Main character is this older white professor um, who's part of that American family and he's married to a black woman and there are some interesting dynamics between their family and then also this professor has a huge animosity and kind of rivalry and hatred with this other professor who is a black African professor and in a lot of ways a lot more conservative in thought than the other one and they kind of the story kind of chronicles their relationships there's a real host of characters and they're all kind of serving a purpose for Zadie Smith to make quite a few jabs at academia, intellectualism, and just the kind of like real life implications of it. It's just a very, very good book. I highly recommend it. I think also the structure and humor of On Beauty is quite similar to the idiot. Next, I recommend Mona. This one is pretty explicit in its connection because it centers around Mona, a young Peruvian writer and academic who is invited to a literary conference in Sweden, I believe. And um, it's a conference and then there is this big award ceremony at the end. Basically every single page, every single sentence is an opportunity for this author to make every possible jab and sarcastic comment about the elite literary world. And this book really serves as a large sardonic criticism of this like literary world where people are supposed are kind of seen as you know these really smart creative genius minds who are kind of like above us but this book kind of shows you that they are in fact just horrible people like everybody else the next two that I recommend are the ones that I haven't read. So I wouldn't say I exactly recommend them, but I'm excited to read them because I have a feeling they touch on similar themes of academia the way that the idiot does. And that is A Lover's Discourse and Call Me Zebra. So A Lover's Discourse is about a Chinese woman who moves to London to pursue a PhD. She gets involved with um, a person there and kind of while these larger politics are going on and I believe her research project and like the subject material that corresponds with the larger plot. And yeah, it says it delivers a story of love, language, and the meaning of home. And then next is Call Me Zebra. So this is about a young woman named Zebra and her and her family are exiled from Iran living in various different places. It says books are Zebra's only companions and she has all these complex literary theories. She meets this guy and they have a tumultuous relationship it seems. It says he thinks she's unhinged, she thinks he's pedantic. So. I mean, it says unhinged in the description, like 
what more could you want? I'm very excited to read these two and maybe I will do an update on whether I think their connection to the idiot makes sense. <laughs> the third category is language, meaning, and its limitations. These are all books that are interested in how language can often be very limiting in describing our inner worlds. They're also very interested in how we create meaning between each other and kind of like how these relationships operate. The first book I would recommend in this category is Intimacies by Katie Katamara. The flap here says everyone wants to be understood and I think that's a great way of describing a major theme of this book because it centers around a interpreter that moves to The Hague to work for the International Criminal Court. This book is kind of is focusing on the kind of expected and unexpected ways we think of intimacy where we expect that the people around us who are our lovers, our friends, our family are the ones that know us intimately. Whereas with this character, they kind of unwillingly have an intimacy with the people that she is interpreting for in a very big court case where kind of forms this weird intimacy with a alleged criminal of grave human rights violations. Next is White on White by Ayşegül Savaş, another Turkish author. I would actually say that this book could easily fit into the academia or language categories. And that's because the main character moves to a city as a grad student to work on her research surrounding uh, medieval Gothic nudes in Europe and specifically like nude sculptures. So that's kind of like the academia side. And then in terms of its connection to language and meaning, I would say this character is unnamed and the writing is very sparse, similar to Rachel Cusk's outline where the main character meets this older woman, Agnes, who is the wife of the man that she's renting from. And Agnes is a painter and will be spending the summer in the upstairs part of the apartment. Um, working in her studio painting these large canvases with white, hence the, the name White on White. The book kind of centers the meeting and kind of undoing between these two characters, where the main character ends up originally very intrigued by Agnes, who seems very cool and older and wiser. And then through the experience of listening to Agnes's stories and her kind of like her various thoughts on the life that she's led, the main character begins to kind of witness the undoing of Agnes and the slow breakdown that she's heading towards. This book is really a meditation on how we relate to each other, how we present ourselves to strangers. There's kind of like an almost ghostly element to this. This recommendation, you know, the recent Sally Rooney, it doesn't have a lot of connection to The Idiot. I would say it's kind of a reach, but I think both of these books are interesting takes on the concept of letters and emails. They're very different. The Idiots focused on when email first started and that was kind of like the main form of digital communication. Like it was a big deal to say email, right? And whereas this is a very contemporary um, take I would say on emails because it's in recent times and these millennial characters are kind of like catching up with each other through these emails because they they live um far apart. I'd say in both of these books email is used as a way to have characters be able to talk about more abstract like subjects or, or like things that they read or various 
topics that they're interested in and then have that kind of serve as a medium through which they can kind of actually really just talk about themselves. So in that way, I guess they are pretty similar. The last thing I would recommend if you are interested in language, particularly the English language and how it can be stretched and manipulated to create wonderful, expansive writing, I would recommend anything by Virginia Woolf. You know, we all know this, but Virginia Woolf has a very unique way of writing. And at the time that she was writing, her focus on the inner subconscious of her characters was a pretty radical way of thinking about writing. And you can tell just the way that she puts language together is honestly stunning. Yeah, those are my recommendations if you liked the idiot. Hopefully there's a wide enough range of books that, you know, various different fans can check out. I would love to hear if you also have any recommendations that fans of the idiot would like um i would love to hear them i would love to read it thank you for watching bye